You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find a man called X. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire is made only by General Motors. And it is this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember that millions of Frigidaires in millions of American kitchens have established Frigidaire's reputation for complete dependability, for lasting satisfaction. Yes, you're twice as sure with two Great name. For Frigidaire is made only by General Motors. No one else can make a Frigidaire. And now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, a man called X. Good evening, Mr. Thurston. I have a little message for you. If you don't mind, I'll give it to you right now. Yes? Have you got Cairo? Not yet, Chief. We're still trying, but the wires to Cairo... I don't care how busy they are. There must be some word by now about Thurston's killers. Get after them again. Tell them I want action, fast. Yes, sir. I'll try immediately. Now, what do you want, Pagan? I wanted to tell you something very important about the late departed, Mr. Thurston. Something I'm sure you never realized, Mr. Chief. I happen to be his only heir. His what? Uh, so many times he told me, Pagan, when I go, I wish to leave everything to you. No. Unfortunately, I don't know where all his money is. But if you would help me to locate it for a reasonable commission... Take on, you dirty, chiseling, black-hearted... Oh, yes, I know, I know. But, but if you would help me collect his estate, I could give you a percentage. A small one, of course, but... Get uh... out of my office. Get out before I... Uh... Yes? Get the call from Cairo, sir. It just came through. I'll take it. Hello. Hello. You sound a septic, Chief. And what if I do? What business is it of... Ken. Ken Thurston. Hmm? Hiya, Chief. But, wait. It can't be you. The reports of your death. Ken, what's happened there in Cairo? A local lab was working with me. He was in my room alone when a female visitor came calling on me. Her charms flew fatal. Yes, but why... Well, why send out the story that you were killed? Chief, if the boys were after think I'm dead, maybe they'll relax a little. Oh. Oh, then the looting of that steamer carrying an American relief shipment isn't just an isolated case. Not a chance. The pirates who bought it on the Red Sea were too well organized. Oh, what a filthy racket. The American people pay for shipments of food and clothing for those poor, starving, unfortunate... I know. And they pay Captain Kidd to make a fortune on the black market. Mm. Any lead yet on who's behind it? Chief, send me the Harbourman file by the first thing. The Harbourman file? Good Lord, Ken, what makes you think he's mixed up in this? Because I was killed with three silver bullets. Silver bullets? Do I get that file? Yes, yes, right away. Where will my man get in touch with you? At the Kismet. A crummy little cafe near the Nile. Uh, a good place for you to hide out? No, terrible. But they serve the finest martinis I've ever tasted. Martini with the onion. Good. Now I'll bring another for the young lady. Uh, I see no young lady at your table. Oh, you will in a second. Very well, Effendi. I heard you order that drink for me. Too bad. I wanted to surprise you. How did you know I would join you? I saw you come in and check the unattached mails, and I thought, well... Uh-uh. I had a friend once who liked onions in his martini. He had excellent taste in drinks. Nothing wrong with his taste in women. 
Your martini, Effendi. Oh, good. Here. Yeah. Well, thank you, Effendi. Shall we drink? To our meeting? To your friend who brought it about. Ah, to my friend. What was your friend's name? I thought it was Ken Thurston. Hmm. Unfortunately, he died before I learned his real name. Too bad. How did it happen? Uh-huh. I killed him. The uh, martini, it is too strong, perhaps? Hmm. So this meeting is no accident? You knew it was not. Are you going to shoot me again? That depends. I'm very fond of money. I'm very fond of living. Hmm. We could both be happy. Oh. If you were to remain alive, you could pay me money for information. Would it be worth it? Would it not be worth almost any amount if it concerned uh, Silva? You're a very interesting person. I could be even more... Oh. What's the matter? Outside through that window, I thought I saw... I should have to leave now. Can you meet me later tonight? Where? At the Silver Scar. Meet me there in an hour. Have the martini waiting. The young lady is leaving, Effendi. She has left. Try counting up to ten. I'll be gone, too. <laughs> Never mind counting. It's too late now. No, Mr. Thurston. What? No, Mr. Thurston, don't, don't go out there. Hey, where, the, where did you come from? No, wait, I'll talk to you later. Get out of my way. No, Mr. Thurston, people are shooting out there, killing each other. I've got to get to that girl. Well, well. Is that, is that the girl you were after, Mr. X? That's one lying there in the street? Yeah. Oh, I say, what's all this rumpus about? Fearfully noisy neighborhood. Fellow can't get a decent night's sleep. Hmm. You haven't been hurt, eh? Well, let's have a look at her. You a doctor? I've been for 40 years. Sibley's the name. Dr. Ford Sibley. My place is right across the street. Been practicing here for let me see. Never mind your life, sister. What about hers? Any future to it? The girl's future's all in her past, young man. She's dead. Yes, I saw it all, Mr. Thurston. Uh, the car was parked waiting for her. Uh, she opened the door, she screamed, and then came the shot. So you do open the door with the kids that took a scared rabbit instead of getting the license number. For which you should thank me. We have no time to chase local murderers, not while this dangerous Haberman is still alive. What do you know about Haberman? Huh? What do I... Oh, why else would the chief send me to you with this file? Probably because you talked him into it, for your usual slight consideration. So that's what you're doing here in Cairo. Pay God. Oh, oh. oh skip it. Well, as I was saying, did you know that this fellow Haberman is an international soldier of fortune and a pirate? I did. Oh. Well, did you know that there is no description of him anywhere? Not even his sex? The only clue is that he's nuts about silver. All his jewelry, ornaments, even his weapons are of silver. Remind me to buy you a dictionary, Pagan. Dictionary? So you can learn the meaning of secret and confidential. They're stamped on the outside of the reports you brought me. Oh, but, Mr. X, uh, why do you think Haberman is here in Cairo? The bullets that killed that man in my room were made of silver. This Haberman deserves to be caught and hung. <laughs> Using such a precious metal in such a wasteful fashion. I'll work on it, Pagan, starting right here. Here? But we've stopped in front of a nightclub. That's right. The Silver Scarab. The floor show. And a female dancer, too. You know, Mr. Thurston, there's nothing I like better than a female dancer. Unless it's a female. <laughs> Mr. X. She, she's the dead girl. That, that dancer is the dead girl. Come back to life. The resemblance is close, but not that close. Oh. Oh, yes, you're right. I, I can see that now. Sure. But for a minute, I thought... Hmm. Look at those silver spangles in her dress. Yeah. Oh. Stay here, Pagan. I'll pick you up later. But why leave now, Mr. Thurston? There'll be other dances, I hope. Yeah, I want to see this one in her dressing room. I tell you, I know nothing about it. It was her own idea. I think it's your lies, Aida. Why did she visit this man? I tell you, I do not know. I do... Oh! Again, I ask you, Zaida, why did she visit him? Playing pretty rough, aren't you? 
What is the meaning of this intrusion? Do I have to write it out for you? Your humor is as badly conceived as your entrance here. Perhaps this will teach you to mend your manners. Never uh, lead with your right. It gets into trouble. I least my arm. You're, you're breaking it. Funny thing about judo, it's liable to hurt people. I'll kill you for this. Let's talk about it later. Good night. You were very foolish. He meant that. I've been foolish before. Not with men like that. Worse. With women. Oh? Do I get a choice tonight? That might depend on what you can tell me of my sister Deborah's death, Mr. Thurston. <laughs> Good old Egyptian grapevine. Well, are you still in a foolish mood? Sure, but not here. No? Then where? Why not a little boat ride on the Nile? Full moon. You see, Ken, my sister Deborah preferred the easy life. Quick money, men like Pauline, the man you threw out of my dressing room. Mm. He's a wealthy and powerful man, Ken. Owner of the Euphrates Shipping Company. Euphrates Shipping Company. You see, he was her friend. It was because of him, I think, that Deborah was involved in this trouble. What trouble, Ada? That's just it. I, I do not know any details. That was why I wished to speak with you. I thought perhaps you could tell me something about it. Oh, you're drawing a blank here, Zeta. I only met her a couple of hours ago, and then only for a few minutes. I see. And now my poor sister Deborah is dead. Well, the fates have decided. There's nothing we can do to alter their decision. I'm a great believer in the fates, Ken. What did they tell you about the immediate future? I do not know, Ken. You want to guess? I'm not sure. Afraid to find out? Afraid, yes. But... You could give me courage, Ken. I could try. If you want me to. Yes, Ken, yes, I want you to. Very much. Then I'll try. But first... Oh! Drop that gun. Oh, let go of my wrist. Let go, I say. Drop the gun, I drop your wrist. No, no, I... All right, Ken, all right. How'd you get that little inspiration? Because I have sworn to kill the man who murdered Deborah, and I think you are the one. Let's keep an open mind about this. You cannot convince me otherwise. No, I can try. I'm holding my arms this way. There isn't very much you can do about it. Oh, Ken. Everything is, is so mixed up. What can I do? I don't know yet. But you've got to change your mind, Vida. And this is the pleasantest way of trying to convince you I can think of. imposition on my good nature. Dragging me around in dark alleys like this. Would you mind telling me why we're here? To find out what makes the wealthy Mr. Posey wealthy. And you think you can find out that out by sneaking around behind all these warehouses? Not huh? all of them, just this one. You created a shipping company. Get out your jackknife, pig on and Jimmy at that window. You talk as though I was a professional warehouse breaker. I don't know how to do that. Well, I'll give eight to five that Harlem was losing most of his silver. Oh, of course, merely as a favor to you, Mr. Thurston, I might try being new at this. I don't know how successful I will be, but... Why, look, Mr. Thurston. What? Amazing. Let's climb in. It's as black as Haberman's sword here, Mr. Thurston. Quiet, be gone. The light under that door. Somebody isn't there, probably with a gun or a knife. Let's go in and see. Do we have to? Can't we jump? Well. Coffins. The room is filled with coffins. What would they be doing in a warehouse of the Euphrates shipping company? I'll bite. Let's see if we can find the answer. We'll look inside one of them. Huh? Oh, no, Mr. Session. Let the dead rest in peace. If we leave them alone, maybe they'll leave us alone. Huh? Maybe. Mr. Thurston? Look. Yeah. Rifles, submachine guns, all kinds of guns. I thought a picture. 
peculiar cargo for coffee. Yeah. Let's check this one. This one's different, Pedro. I'm leaving. I just remembered an important engagement. I left my woeful iron burning. Don't be a fool. She can't hurt you now. How do I know? If she can move from the street in front of the kismet into this coffin, she, she can do anything. Mr. X, there's no chance of a mistake? No. No. The girl in that coffin. That's Debra. we continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, originated by J. Richard Kennedy. This is Wendell Niles speaking. Just think how many times a day you go to your refrigerator and you'll realize how helpful even one extra convenience would be. Then look at all the ways Frigidaire engineers have planned to save your time and energy. They gave the interior of the Frigidaire refrigerator plenty of shelf space. They made it easy to store all those special things you keep in a refrigerator. Gave you space for tall bottles, a big meat tender, handy glass-topped hydrators for fruits and leafy vegetables. Lots of room for the frozen foods you like to have on hand for quick, easy meals. They finished the interior of the food compartment with lifetime porcelain. A wipe with a damp cloth, and it's clean. Yes, and they even designed special ice trays. Unique Frigidaire quick cube trays to give you trigger-quick ice service. Most important of all... Frigidaire engineers powered the Frigidaire refrigerator with a mechanism that requires no attention and uses less current than an ordinary light bulb. It's the famous meter miser, simplest refrigerating mechanism ever built. Remember, Frigidaire engineers designed the Frigidaire refrigerator to save your time and energy. And remember, you're twice as sure with two great names. For Frigidaire is made only by... General Motors. And now to return to Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Mr. X is in Cairo to track down the international bandit Haberman. The trail has led him to a warehouse of the Euphrates Shipping Company, which he finds filled with coffins containing rifles and machine guns, except one, which holds the body of the mysterious Egyptian girl, Debra. We join him now as he and Pagan stand there looking down. Please, Mr. Thurston, let's get out of here. Mm, small round bruise on her throat, just above the artery. I wonder. The only thing I wonder about is why are we still standing here? Wait till I check the shipping tags on these coffins. That's in Arabic, but a few words, pretty clear. Port Said, Mohammed Bay, Mecca. Come on, Pagan, we're leaving. But where are we going? To Port Said, by way of Dr. Sibley's joint across from the Kismet Cafe. to arrive to get the girl's body, you know, when this Arabian fellow approached and struck me unconscious. Came to, and the girl was gone. Ever seen him before, Doctor? Once or twice, Mr. Thurston, frequenting the kismet. Never even been introduced. Makes me furious. Can't do that to me. I want to be in the know, Thurston, definitely. Don't know what's up. All that sort of thing, but I want to be in the know. Mm. How well do you know Port Said, Doctor? Been in the Middle East 40 years. Know the place like a book. Good, you're in. I'll brief you later. Right now, get us to Port Said in a hurry. Right. Uh, what's the time? Uh, don't have a watch. Never carry the beastly thing. Huh? Always stopping on me. It's um, 11.43. Oh, splendid. Time enough to catch the last night train. I'll phone for a cab. Be right back. Mr. Thurston, I'm not going to ask you about the gun, or about the posing, or the dead girl, or the dancer Zaida. Not even about Haberman. I just want to know one thing. Why are we going to Port Said? Yes, why we're... You said it. Here you go. We're going there to find out about the gun. We're going to find out about Posey, Debra, Zaida, and Haberman. Hey, 
Uh, there it is, Thurston. Night train to Port Sane. First class carriages are on this side. Shall we get aboard? Yes, but not together. Oh, uh, No, no, you, uh, you've got a compartment for yourself. We'll meet in Port Said. Uh, quite undercover sort of thing. Well, suggest we meet at the El Akbar Hotel. El Akbar. A middle class traveler's lodging. Quite respectable. Um, oh, write it down for me, will you? Sorry, Carl. No pen or pencil. Hmm? I'll never carry them. Pens always leak and the pencils run out of lead. That's all right. I'll remember. See you there. Right, cheerio. I'll see you with the good old Akbar. Well, Mr. Thurston? Did we get aboard, too? Yes. No. Huh? Hello, Prozine. You have a faculty for appearing where you're not wanted, Mr. Thurston. Oh, I've been told. Going somewhere? Port Said, for instance? Prying into my affairs or interfering with them is a very dangerous pastime. Good night, Mr. Thurston. You know something? That man's personality doesn't like me. He doesn't exactly send me. Let's get aboard. We'll take the uh, third compartment on the left. Uh, why the third one? Because Posey's taken the second. Well, uh, wouldn't it be less crowded if we took the fourth compartment? Uh, you know, a little farther away? There's another friend of ours in four. Huh? She got aboard while Posey was talking to us. She? Saida. <laughs> Wonderful. Just the two of us here in this compartment. And now we're nearing Port Said, and our journey together will end. I wonder. Ken, listen to me. You must forget this business that brings you here. You don't know how powerful the forces are working against you. I took a correspondence course in muscle building once. Please, Ken, this is no joking matter. The pit has already been dug. The pit intended to be the grave of the man called X. Mm. There must be another letter in the alphabet. i better find it. Too many people seem to know that one. Then you will not listen to me. Oh, Ken, please don't die. Please. That's good advice, Saida. I'll try to follow it. There are times, Mr. X, when you're the most tiring of all men. No sooner do we arrive at Port Said when you rush me like mad to commissioner of the port. Well? And then before I have even had a chance to chase my breath, we're off again. This time down here to the dock. Mr. Thurston. There's your answer, Pagan. The Mohammed Bay. The Mohammed... So, so that's what Mohammed Bay stands for. A rusty old camp steam. And look at the cargo they're loading. Coffin. Coffin? Yeah. Rosians built up a live trade in dead Mohammedans, lugging coffins to Mecca. Who suspects that a sanctimonious guy of substituting guns for bodies and dropping him off to Harbourman? Ah, so that's how he can be a regular pirate and steal the American relief supplies. Sure. But how do you know that these coffins are the same ones that we saw in the warehouse? I don't. That's why I'm going to sneak aboard and find out. Huh? Oh, no. You meet Dr. Sibley at the El Akbar Hotel. Wait for me there. And if you don't happen to show up? You know, they could kill you, you know. Find yourself a nice nightclub. Maybe the dancers can help you forget your bereavement. What? It's now my turn to ask the question, Mr. Thurston. Are you going somewhere? Colzine, you remind me of a summer cold, very unpleasant and hard to get rid of. Sometimes if colds are ignored and get bad enough, they can prove to be fatal. What, what, what is this, National Pistol Week? I haven't seen so many guns since the last gangster picture. Unlike the weapons in the cinema, this one does not shoot blanks. Huh? Turn around with your back toward me. I haven't got much choice, have I? You are going aboard the Mohammed Bay to a much warmer welcome than you had expected. <laughs> Mr. X... Well, Thurston, how do you feel now? Uh, oh, well, I see your cabin has all the latest conveniences, including the lovely Zaida. I'm sorry, Ken. I tried to warn you, but you would not listen to me. It sounded appealing, but I couldn't go for it. Now, our Hubbard was... No, not while he was still running around loose. Ah, uh, yes, Harperman. Now that the Mohammed Bay has started her journey, you can forget about him. Long before we reach Mecca, you will have forgotten about everything. 
Because you will... Thank God, everyone. Stay gone. Mr. Thurston, we have come to the rescue. Shoot the first pirate who moves, Mr. Dr. Sibley. Sibley. If we will make them board the gang like later. Stay gone, you idiot. How'd you ever beam this up? That's gratitude for you. I meet Dr. Sibley on the dock. We witness your abduction, risk our lives to come aboard and save you from sudden death. And you call me an idiot. Don't take my word for it. Ask Harberman. What has he got to do with it? You brought him aboard with you. Mr. Thurston, this train has caused you to lose your mind. I only brought Dr. Sibley aboard. So how could I have... How could I... Oh, no. Oh, tell me he's wrong, Doctor. Tell me he's... He's... Impossible, old chef. He's quite correct. You can relax now, Polzine. Zyder, I have them covered. Tell me, Mr. X, how did you know? Your old weakness, Harberman, silver. It showed up in your disguise. Nonsense. I deliberately wore nothing metallic on. Oh, that's what I mean. You went overboard. I never heard of a doctor not carrying a watch or fountain pen or pencil. When I thought about it, it wasn't too tough to figure out why they'd all be silver. But the worst mistake you made was in killing Debra. Killing Debra? But my sister was killed by shots from a car. One of Hoverman's stooges shot her all right, but the bullet didn't kill her. The small, round bruise on her throat proved that. I do not understand, Ken. When Harberman was playing doctor, he must have found a pulse in her throat. That meant she might still talk. After she failed to kill you at the hotel and was going to double-cross me by selling information to you, I had no alternative but to strangle her. Kind of looks like he's the man you've been looking for, Zaida. Yes. The man who killed my sister. The man I swore I would kill in turn. The man I am going to kill. Zaida, that knife. Put down that knife or I'll... Zaida, you fool. What have you done? Hold it, Pauline. Some knife throw right through the shoulder. Pick up his gun, pick on. Sure, Mr. Swine. Thanks, Zaida. Ken, I... I don't know what to say. So you tied up with these two to find out who killed Debra? It's true, Ken, I swear it. Well, Pauline? You forget we're practically on the high seas, Thurston. You cannot possibly hope to take this ship over by yourself. That's why I arranged for a little help before I came aboard. You'll notice we're losing way. That means the destroyer is coming alongside. You're right, Mr. Thurston. So we don't have to make a pilgrimage after all. No, Pagan. But Harberman and Pauline do. A one-way pilgrimage to the final payoff of piracy. Uh, there's nothing in this world lower than the rat who profit by stealing from the poor and starving. That's why we've got to stop them. It's a long, tough job, but you know, I can think of 140 million people who just love to roll up their shirt sleeves and do it. <laughs> Frigidaire star Herbert Marshall will return in just a moment. The Man Called X is presented each week with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer, who invites you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire electric refrigerators, electric ranges, electric water heaters, home freezers, and a wide variety of refrigerating and air conditioning equipment for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. And our Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And next week, I promise you another story filled with suspense and mystery. As usual, there'll be Leon Belasco along as Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, where next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Richard Ayer's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.